Um, wow, giving back. I think it's really important if companies can give back. Um, it's a whole cycle where it can feed on each other. And some thoughts that I had while you were talking, um, I was in London last week and I was actually with one of Richard's family members who's involved with Virgin Galactic, which is our space travel. And he was telling me that he was on his bachelor party and I said, oh, really, what'd you guys do? And I thought he was going to tell me this crazy, wild story about, like, running around in London. And he had brought five of his friends to Africa to build homes for orphans. And, you know, that's the kind of culture that actually is within the virgin DNA. And so our company, you know, not only do we try to give back, but that creates a lot of passion for employees because they're happy to be involved with positive um, projects. You know, another thing that we're doing, it's a smaller effort, but... I'll be speaking at TwitterCon this weekend, and TwitterCon is doing um, an effort to raise money for Operation Smile, and so we're giving some money to that to help them, and, you know, I was having this conversation with my daughter, and I said, you know, we're giving 10 smiles, and she's, she's seven, and she said, well, what does that mean, we're giving 10 smiles, and I said, well, we're going to help 10 kids who were born with, you know, cleft palates. Uh, that they couldn't smile. And so here it is. It's a company making a donation, but I'm engaged in it. I'm teaching a future generation about the importance of it, and it goes in a cycle. And so I think that, you know, sometimes funds are challenging in terms of being able to, like, give money, but you can give your time. You can, you know, give what you can. Um, so I'm a big believer in that. Um, a quick Is uh, Tracy a lot in the house? Tracy. Man, I miss you. But anyway, um, so one of the things I wanted to bring up, Tracy, um, she's my partner in crime in uh, Comcast. And what we're doing um, for next month event is, we're, by the way, if you guys don't know, we're doing a business pitch, which a grand finale will be at BizTech. Um, but what the business pitch is really about is like American Idol for entrepreneur. Instead of singing, it's business pitch. And you're doing um, this pitch online and it's voting on Facebook and all that. But not to go into the detail of it, um, the theme for this quarter is social good. One of the things that I'm very passionate about uh, as well is to support nonprofits. So what we really want to recognize are companies or nonprofit who are doing something good for the community. We want them to shine. And um, the price for that is um, whoever that win the quarterly contest will get a five minutes exclusive interview on CBS5. So if you guys know of any great companies who are doing something good for the community, they should definitely be recognized. Another thing that um, Megan and I are working on is this whole Org 2.0. I learned that term from her, actually. Um, you know, with technology, you really can do a lot with very little. And BizTech Day will be about helping small business to do that. But we realize nonprofit absolutely can learn um, let's say Hazel Grace will talk about like using Facebook and to you know, raise more awareness for small business. Nonprofit can do exactly the same thing. So like, let's say, for example, there's a really cool app called Cost. I learned that from Hazel. And I was looking at some of these nonprofit. There are millions of people who is on these cost application. I'm like, wow, somebody need to learn that. Somebody need to learn about Squidoo to be on that list to get donated by these guys who write these pages. People just don't know. So we really, really want to work on that and you know, spread the ideas and help, help out nonprofit as well. So I just want to add in one additional thing in case you don't, as I said, have the resources necessary to be giving back. Part of the, the question I wanted to get to also has to do with what's your impact on the planet? And not necessarily if you're starting an eco business, but decisions that you make in your everyday business that have to do with your brand, how you're marketing yourself, may or may not have an impact on, say, landfills. So our business, we were looking at uh, producing DVDs or CDs with information, and we had the discussion. We said, that's going to wind up in someone's garbage can. You know? And so it went to the, so far as to say, OK, well, we're now actually going to deliver it over MP3s. So I think it's important that you consider your profit people, and also the planet. And that's something that we're, I, I feel really passionate about, which is why I didn't just ask a question. So thank you. Um, next question, and this is something I know all of you are interested in, in discussing, has to do with brands being in trouble. And rather than necessarily picking on other brands that are out there that may be kind of flailing right now in this economy or just for whatever reason, what have you done to do damage control or to prevent weakening the brand. Who wants to start? Thank you. 
All right, you know, I'm actually going to go with the personal brand story because I think that um, a lot of the people that I talked to at the beginning of the event were entrepreneurs or you're either, you know, changing things or trying to do things. And so I want to talk about when my brand was in trouble. Um, so I worked with this ad agency for, you know, 15, 18 years, and it was right after the dot-com. We actually had a huge piece of real estate right up the street where we could have fit maybe 600 people in the space. And John and Richard, they loved me. They're like, we're not going to let you go. Don't worry. We're going to keep you there. So slowly, it's dwindling down. And I think we were down to maybe 20 people. And so I'm sitting upstairs in this huge building. And they keep building walls around me <laughs> and basically trying to rent out the rest of the place. So I'm sitting there in this little white box. I'm like, oh my god, this is horrible. I'm like atrophying in this box. And so, you know, my brand was in trouble. Like, we, <laughs> we, we could not survive the real estate and the dot-com bomb, but nobody wanted to close the doors. They didn't want to, like, realize that they needed to close the thing. And I was in total personal fear. It was like, oh, my God, I've been with this company for most of my career. What am I going to do? So finally, I called John and Richard, and I said, you know, hey, guys, I'm really glad that you care about me, but I'm a tax write-off. So you got to just close the doors. I got I got to do something else. So the point that I want to make is that, you know, at that moment, I didn't know what was going to happen next. And, you know, I took a leap of faith and realized that there was going to be another opportunity. There was going to be another job. And when my uh, you know, the doors closed there, I did a lot of freelancing. I had my own production company. I was like networking, like getting any job that I could. I was doing videos, I was shooting commercials. Um, you know, just trying to make it work. And when I got the recruiter call for Virgin America, I looked at the job brief and I thought, there's no way they're going to hire me. I have never been a client before. I have no idea what half of the things are on this, you know, this job interview thing, but I went for it. So the point is, you know, you may think that your company is at like a crossroads or, you know, individually that you're at a crossroads, but I think that, you know, just getting past the fear and like focusing and trying. Um, that you can accomplish a lot, and you never know what's next. So that's my own personal brand story. Uh, just a f amusing to me follow-up story to the feeling like you're in over your head when someone starts talking about this new road that you might take is uh, when we were talking about starting Squidoo, Seth very articulately rattled through all of this stuff that he could imagine us doing and what it how it would run, what engine it would use, you know, the jQuery and the CSS and the Ajax and all this stuff that was going to be happening at this site. And I'm coming from book publishing, so I'm this very, you know, erudite, literate uh, writer, editor person, and I wasn't quite uh, up to speed on my programming skills, for sure. <laughs> and I, s had, I stopped him for a second. I said, Seth, hang on. Why do you want to hire me? Why do you want me to come start this with you? I just understood 9% of what you said. And he goes, well, if you're at 99%, you're ahead of the game. <laughs> and and uh, he hired me. I think it was on the misunderstanding that I understood a lot more than I did. Um, but the original question, which is a lot better, which is, um, you know, what do you do if you feel that your brand is in trouble, uh, that sort of thing? I am slightly um, pull apart the question because the idea of a brand to me can be really misleading. I mean, it's a stamp and a cow, right? Um, otherwise, it's a sum of a lot of different parts, and it's a sum of what your company stands for, just the, the people who actually run it, why they go to work every day, why they like it, why your customers or your flyers or your users or your people who attend your conferences, why they show up, what you're trying to deliver to them, um, what mediocrity you're trying to vault over or abolish. Um, a lot of that is your brand, so it's really hard to just say, well, my brand is this logo, and now I'm not saying that that's what you meant, but um, so it's very hard to, because a brand is hard to define, it's similarly hard to define, oh, shit, it's in trouble. <laughs> it's, it's very hard to then say, we think we're going down a bad path, because if it was your idea, you probably still think it's a good path.